It's Monday, May 17, 2021, and the Morning Edition is live. On today's show, the Red Cross gearing up to host a workshop on mental health, a call for more volunteers to assist in the fight against COVID-19, and finding the right drop. So let's start the morning off right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Morning Edition. I'm with Don Davis. And it's so great to be waking up with everybody out there. I'm Charles Fisher. Good morning. Let's have a great week ahead. Patience is definitely a virtue, eh? And I don't morning. have no patience. You know that. <laughs> I see you were catching barracuda, barracuda and all this other stuff. Oh, man. Snapper. What else? Really? What Yellow else? tails. Yellow, Yellow tails. tails. You have no, no gooper. No gooper, Runs. right? No. Yeah, I, yeah I, I, have I one on strawberry. Strawberry. <laughs> going on the boat. The guys went out on the boat. Yeah. And I, I, they, they got a big catch, and I was, they were able to call me and say, man, they did so good this mm -hmm. time. So I went out there, did a story, and then we were going to talk about that. You know, fishing is one of my favorite pastimes. Yeah. Can't wait to receive my second shot so I could just oh, wow. pick up on a Friday afternoon and go to uh -huh. the Andres or Exumo <laughs> or Eleuthero or one of those islands. And now and just, you to go to Inagua the and, and just cast my line mm -hmm. into the water. And talking about Inagua, I'd like to say hello to the folks down there in Inagua. You know that most of our viewership is on the islands, Exumo, Eleuthero, Andres, uh, Andres Abaco. So thank you. Even San Salvador. Sadly, yes. Even San so Salvador all the watching. Family islanders out there, thank <laughs> you for tuning in to the morning edition. And no curfew on the family island. And you know, you know they left a party, so I'm sure they're excited <laughs> about that. I hope we get there pretty <laughs> soon. And how was your weekend? It was pretty good, restful. You know, I always love to rest with all the spike in COVID cases. I need to you're looking stay young. You're looking yeah. young this morning. Like I, I you try look. my best, even though I'm getting older. Yeah. And, and I, I just want to <laughs> confirm some reports that. People are saying that LaDawn and I have been on this set for so long that we're starting to look alike. Definitely No, not. no, Definitely no, not. no, no. <laughs> Beauty, beast. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get it on to the streets where our Desmond Sanders is out of this morning. Traffic. Good morning, Des. Good morning, Charles, and good morning, LaDawn. Desmond Sanders here. I'm at the Sanders Beach, Cable Beach Roundabout. And let me tell you, the streets are busy and the weather is picture perfect. Corporal Christopher Williams of the Royal Bahamas Police Force Traffic Division joining me on the broadcast. The start of a new week, no major incidents to report so far, but a number of incidents overnight and over the weekend, right? Yes, good morning, Desmond. Good morning, Bahamas. We're very unhappy to report that we had three traffic accidents, which happens overnight. But during the 72 hour, we had a total of 17 accidents. 14 of which were accidents for minor damages, free with injuries. At this present time, we have five hospitalized victims as a result of those traffic accidents. Wow, and we want to advise motorists to take it easy, be careful on the streets, and obey and adhere to the COVID-19 protocols. Now, uh, for many people who are not aware, the traffic division has mounted an operation. Uh, this operation uh, started a few weeks back, but there was an operation at Awaki Fish Fry. Tell us about that. Yes, yesterday uh, we, we had an operation, in, like you said, in the area of Arawaki, which resulted in 65 persons being cited for various infractions, uh, five arrests for outstanding warrants of arrest, uh, five vehicles being towed. Now, it was th the message that we were getting out there. Hey, we're out here. You're allowed to party in the safe protocols that is provided, your, right? Uh, this, um, what's been happening out there was total chaos, all right? The number of police that we had out there wasn't really sufficient, but we made it, we made it do. We just wanted them to know that we're out there for their safety and just to teach, preach road and public safety while traversing the streets of Nassau. All right. Last week on our segment, we dealt with speed. This morning, we, I want to focus just for a brief moment before we send it back to Charles. Spare tires, that's a big issue that we that doesn't get that much attention yes you're absolutely right Desmond only in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas that a spare tire is actually a fifth tire for Bahamians 
uh, the spare tire is simply just to allow you just to get to a gas station or tire, to a tire shop so that you can go ahead and put on the actual tire so that you can still have that spare in case another tire blows out. So Bahamans, please use your spare tire just for that emergency to get you to a tire shop to repurchase a tire or plug that tire and then go on with your day. Thank you very much, Christopher Williams. Corporal Christopher Williams from the Royal Bahamas Police Force Traffic Division giving us some very good insights and tips there for motorists this week. Back to you, Charles and LaDon. Thanks a lot. It looks so good on the outside. 75 degrees, partly cloudy winds. East at 9 miles per hour. Humidity 64% northwest and central Bahamas. The weather today, partly cloudy to cloudy, hot and breezy with scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms. Heavier times in the vicinity of the frontal boundary, partly cloudy, breezy and warm tonight with isolated showers and a thunderstorm. For the southeast Bahamas, weather partly cloudy and hot and humid with widely scattered showers and an isolated thunderstorm becoming partly cloudy and warm with isolated showers tonight. Your daytime high temperature, 88 degrees Fahrenheit. Your overnight low, 70. Looking ahead to Tuesday, Weather partly cloudy to cloudy, warm and breezy with scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms in the vicinity of the weekend front. Partly sunny and warm with isolated showers elsewhere. Temperature 85 in the day, 74 at night. And looking ahead to Wednesday, some dark clouds up there in the air. Widely windy, scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms in the northwest and central islands. The temperatures 85 day, 73 at night. The third wave of the COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in the Bahamas crossing over the 11,000 mark when it comes to positive cases. With over 8,000 positive cases on record, the island of New Providence continues to generate the highest numbers of cases daily. And the situation is being closely monitored by the Prime Minister. Partying and social gathering, etc. And um, health officials were sending the message again loud and clear that please avoid all the social gathering, avoid uh, and, and follow the mitigation protocol. Let us all become a nation that has been vaccinated. The Governor General extending the state of emergency. His Excellency, the Most Honorable Cornelius Smith, signed the proclamation of emergency dated May 14th per Article 29 of the Constitution, declaring that a state of emergency exists in the Bahamas. Additional emergency orders have also been released. Restaurants on islands previously prohibited from offering indoor dining may now offer this option to patrons who have been fully vaccinated for COVID-19. Fully vaccinated individuals will also not be required to take a RT-PCR test to travel from New Providence and Grand Bahama and will not be required to take secondary testing on day five of inter-island travel from those islands. A fully vaccinated traveler, including citizens and residents, is not required to take a COVID-19 RT-PCR test to enter the Bahamas. Fully vaccinated travelers are still required to obtain a travel health visa. However, visa fees for fully vaccinated persons have been reduced for citizens and residents. International travel health visas for fully vaccinated citizens and residents are $10. Domestic travel visas for fully vaccinated travelers are free of charge. The fine for submitting false vaccination records is $10,000 or two years imprisonment or both. Under the new order, the requirement has been removed for RT-PCR COVID-19 testing for persons traveling from Apico, Exuma, and Eleuthera. The RT-PCR COVID-19 test requirement remains in place for persons traveling from New Providence and Grand Bahama, except for a fully vaccinated traveler. Daily curfews have been lifted from Abaco, Eleuthera, and Exuma. Grand Bahamas' daily curfew remains at 11 p.m. to 5 a.m., while the daily curfew on New Providence remains from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. 220 COVID-19 deaths are now on record with three persons passing away from the virus this weekend. They include a 73-year-old Andros resident who died on Friday, an 80-year-old female of New Providence who died on May 13th, and a 74-year-old male of New Providence who died on Monday, May 10th. 26 deaths remain under investigation. Meantime, 15 new COVID infections have been reported with 44 here in New Providence, two over in Exuma and one each in Grand Bahama, Eleuthera, Inagua, and Cat Island. The national count now stands at 11,184. 43 persons are in hospital, with six in the intensive care unit. 828 cases are active. 
We now know what really happened to the defense forces HMBS Lawrence Major. According to release, the vessel which was transmitting or transiting the Suriname River was moored alongside a floating dry dock undergoing maintenance and repairs at the Suriname Dry Dock and Shipbuilding Shipyard when the motor vessel Tropic Tide collided into, uh, into it around 8.30 on Saturday morning. Structural damage was incurred to the vessel's superstructure port side, upper deck, railing, stairway, and bow areas. HMBS Lawrence Major and Shipyard personnel safely evacuated from the vessel before the collision occurred. Injuries to crew members were limited to minor cuts and bruises. An extensive assessment will be done to, to determine the extent of damages sustained. The fallen four of the HMBS Flamingo, David Tucker, Austin Smith, Edward Williams, and Fenrick Sturrup were remembered for their sacrifice 41 years ago during Sunday morning's worship service at St. Gregory's Anglican Church on Carmichael Road. While thanking the brave men and women who are enlisted in the Defense Force for their service, and those who died, Canon Sebastian Campbell said the passing of the baton must continue. Why can't we look at streets? and roadways in our Bahamas to bear the names of these fallen Marines. Don't we name streets in the Bahamas after politicians? Don't we name streets in the Bahamas after athletes who run and bring us gold and silver? I am not taking anything away from them. I am saying that we need to add to that list. The country mourning the death of media icon Sir Charles Carter. Sir Charles passed away on Saturday morning. He was 78 years old. Carter served as a member of parliament and cabinet minister. Condolences are extended to his wife, Lady Muriel Carter, his sons, Eddie, Mark, and members of his extended family. On the NBA regular season schedule came to an end last night. DeAndre Aiden sat out his third straight game with left knee soreness. But the Phoenix Suns still ended on a high note with a come from behind win over the San Antonio Spurs. The Suns finished the regular season second in the West at 51-21 and, and weighed the win of the play-in game between the Los Angeles Lakers and the Golden State Warriors in the first round of the playoffs. Meantime, Buddy Heal and the Sacramento Kings are done for the season. He closed out a loss last night to the Utah Jazz, but he had 13 points and 7 rebounds. He averaged 16 points for the season. Over in the WNBA, John Crell Jones and the Connecticut Sun with a strong start to the season. They opened up with a 78-67 win over Atlanta on Friday. Jones had 26 points and 8 rebounds. Following that, the Sun made it two in a row with a 86-78 win over Phoenix last night. A double-double for John Crell, 14 points and 13 boards. The Sun play again on Wednesday against Indiana. And when we come back, we call for more volunteers to assist in the fight against COVID-19. So keep it locked. Everything is changing, and your favorite hardware and home improvement store is getting with the program. We Buy You Sell is rolling out its new online shopping feature. If you go to our website, wbusbahamas.com, it's a quick and easy three-step process. Step one, browse the gallery and select your item. Step two, add to cart. And step three, check out. Go to our website, wbusbahamas.com, to shop with us today. Red Cross and its volunteers are gearing up with, a key, with key partners rather to host a workshop for young people impacted by Hurricane Dorian and the COVID-19 pandemic. This morning we are joined by National Youth Development Officer of the Bahamas Red Cross, Beijing Rogers. Beijing, welcome to the Morning Edition. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So Beijing, the Bahamas Red Cross is embarking on a workshop to assist young Bahamians impacted. Talk to us a little bit about what participants can expect at this particular workshop. Yes, yeah, so the participants are our young Bahamians and they can expect a fun environment, a safe place, and the tools they need to help cope with the impact of Hurricane Dorian and COVID in these last two years. And what kind of relief do you think uh, this workshop would bring to those affected? Honestly, I feel that it would bring a great relief because 
due to Hurricane Dorian and the trauma that, w that they went through, as it was the greatest hurricane in Bahamian history, as well as everything they're going through with COVID, having to stay home, be in isolation, not touch, feel, interact with their friends, get sweaty, um, learn um, in, a, in an environment with other people that really really, really does something to the mind. So the fact that we can create these workshops, we give them great relief because we'll be giving them the tools um, to be able to cope with what's going on up here in their mind. Talk to me about some of the dynamic speakers and the discussions taking shape at this uh, workshop. Yes, so we have searched through all the land to find a great presenter um, for this workshop. But honestly, we have um, a presenter by the name of Jenna Pratt, and she is a life coach and a art therapist. And she has worked alongside an expert in the mental health um, uh, industry, all the way from Scotland, who has actually done a workshop right after Hurricane Dorian to help create the curriculum and the content for this workshop. So we are extremely excited to have her um, do her thing. And then obviously we also have uh, mental health professionals who are going to be the volunteers for the workshop because if something happens, if there's a trigger, we want to make sure that we have everything in place in order to cater to that young person. And how many participants are expected at the workshop? Where and when will it actually take place? Yes, great question. So we are fighting against a lot. So we have, um, we have the national tests that are happening during this month and obviously COVID um, restrictions. And so it's kind of been tough in order to um, find those young people that we are trying to target, especially here in Nassau. But the plan and what we have already organized is to have at least 25 young people at each workshop. And at the moment, we're conducting five. If we need more, we will. We will be doing this in Grand Bahama on May 26th and the 27th, as well as Avoco on May 29th and the 31st. Because obviously, you know, we want to go where our target uh, young people are, and they have left Nassau. Many of them have left Mass Nassau and went back home to Abaco and Grand Bahama. But Nassauvians, we have not forgotten about you either. We do have a workshop that we will be doing for you as well um, because uh, we are here for all our young people uh, who have been impacted by Hurricane Dorian and COVID. Such a bubbly personality. <laughs> Beijing, all the best to you and your team as you continue to implement programs and initiatives to fight mental health. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Well, as the government continues to ramp up its vaccination exercise in the country, there is a call for more volunteers to assist in the fight against COVID-19. Desmond Sanders tells us more. Country's vaccination rollout continues to pick up speed. Member of the COVID Consultative Committee, Barry Resson, says volunteering is a great way to help the country fight the COVID crisis. He's urging those who are eager and willing to step forward. To be a volunteer, you know, send us your telephone number and your email, and we will put you on our list so you will get notified of every shift that's available to work. And we do need a lot of volunteers, so we'd really appreciate anybody who wants to help their country step up and give us a shift a week. You know, a shift is four or five hours, morning or afternoon, at any one of our sites. Right now we have Church of God, St. Anselm's, and Kendall G. Isaacs, Monday Bahamar. Give us a little time. And that's all it takes, and it's, it's fun. I find everybody who's kind of volunteer says, oh, this is fun, I enjoy this. Rassin is also past president of Rotary International. Rotary is a coordinating body of volunteers. He and his team have mobilized some 800 individuals to assist the COVID vaccine consultative committee with its work. This is all the NGOs in the country. This is individuals who want to give back to their country. And we're using about 100 volunteers every day. And some of them are coming every single day, day after day. They're, it's just, it warms your heart. The, the amazing work that they're doing. A lot of Rotary, but there are other organizations as well. Okay. Presently, there are 800 volunteers working at vaccination sites in the capital and in Grand Bahama, including the Kendall J.L. Isaacs Gymnasium, Loyola Hall, Church of God of Prophecy, East Street, St. Aslam's Bernard Road, and the Susan J. Wallace Community Center. The member of the National Vaccine Consultative Committee says... 
Over 30,000 souls have taken the jab since the official rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine in the country in March this year. And while a mammoth task, he says the work is rewarding. It, it's, it's all about coordinating the people as they come and organizing them so they're comfortable to make sure that they're at the right place at the right time, they have an appointment. Some people want to get their second dose quickly and you really don't want that till after at least seven weeks. So we're having to turn some of them away and said, you gotta come back because it's better for you at the right time. So don't rush it. So we, we take care of that. We make sure they have the temperature and sanitized and then we check them in on the computer. We make sure all the information they put in is correct and we did have some issues with merging one system to another so we want to make sure everything is absolutely correct and that's what we're doing um, and then once they're checked in then the nurses from ministry of health and the pharmacists they're the ones who deal with the clinical side but we help to again organize the individuals so that they get through the system as quickly as we possibly can well, furry kittens were dropped off at the Bahamas Humane Society last week and are now fending for themselves at the facility. Adoption coordinator Fiona Moody says the kittens need their mother to feed them as there are no volunteers on site to do so for the 24-hour feeding exercise. Additionally, Moody says what's even worse is a large number of abandoned dogs left in the communities around the capital. It's an issue Moody says the Bahamas Humane Society is unable to maintain due to the lack of finances. We have seen quite uh, an upsurge since uh, the beginning of last year during COVID. A lot of people, unfortunately, have even just moved out and left their pets behind them. And um, we rely on kind neighbours to call us. If they can't bring the pet to us, we will send our ambulance. We have a 24-hour ambulance system, so we will, would be able to pick up these dogs. And we've done quite a lot recently. Now, if your pet ends up missing, Moody gave these tips pet owners should consider in the hopes of being reunited with their long-lost pet. If you do have a pet, try and make sure that they have a identity, collar, um, a tag if possible. Some of the vets also offer microchipping, which is excellent. To, if you find a pet, you can scan. We have a scanner here, we have microchipping, and then we can tell you know, from a database if this pet is owned. And as we head to the break, we take a look back at the day in Bahamian history on May 17, 1956. The luxury liner Rainer Del Mar made its maiden voyage across the Atlantic to Nassau. The liner arrived with nearly 600 passengers on board. Also on May 17, 2001, the Old Bahama Bay Resort at West End Grand Bahama was officially opened. ZNS Shopping Network is the place for deals. Bahamas get ready for our national launch coming June 1st, 2021. For the first time ever, any store can advertise their sale items or discounted coupons on ZNS. And you get TV and radio commercials at never before seen prices. So if you got stuff and you want to put it on sale, we will tell the entire Bahamas about it. So merchants, log on to ZNS Shopping Network.com and click the Merchant Inquiry button and get started. Conference championships dominating the NCAA outdoor track and field season over the weekend. A call of Bahamians picking up conference titles. We'll start at the Summer League Championship where Sasha Rell set a new meet record in the women's 100 meter hurdles, winning in 13.30 seconds. She raced the old mark of 13.44. Wells also the class of the field in the open women's 100 meters. She took the conference crown there, winning in 11.68. The women's 4 by 100, another title Wells put under her belt as well. Joined by fellow Bahamian Gabrielle Gibson, they would lead all Roberts to the victory. At the American Athletic Conference Championship, Ryan Bethel doing her thing. She broke her own meet record, winning the 20 meters in 22.54 seconds. Bethel also scoring a personal best in the 40 meters. She took the title there in 51.77. Meantime, at the Big Ten Championship, Samson Coburg was a part of the Purdue Boilermakers winning 4 by one team. They clocked 39.30. Teammate Tamar Green also won the men's triple jump, soaring 52 feet 10 and a quarter inch. Now an update on Jazz Chisholm. Ending his minor league rehab assignment on Friday and Saturday at a home run to help the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp to a win over Durham. 
From there, Jazz was right on the plane Saturday, flying across the country to join up with the Miami Marlins for the season against season series against the LA Dodgers. In his first game back yesterday, Jazz was two for five with a run scored in a three-two win. The Marlins start a three-game series against the Philadelphia Phillies on Tuesday. And on the other side of the break, finding the right drop. that all citizens, residents, and visitors are adhering to the COVID-19 safety protocol. Restaurants may operate utilizing curbside pickup, drive-thru, takeaway, or delivery. Any establishment who allows the entry of any person not wearing a mask is liable upon a summary conviction to a fine of $500. I am Ambassador Ashanti Rooker of the COVID-19 Enforcement Unit. Save a life that may be your own. This message brought to you by the Ministry of National Security in conjunction with the Broadcasting Corporation. You can often see his bright smile even through his mask as he serves all of his customers from day to day. This morning, Jamila Mizek speaks to a Grand Bahama newspaper vendor who says despite hiccups in business recently, he's thankful for the support of the community. If you've ever passed the Ranfilly Circus area, then you've probably seen this familiar face. Entrepreneur Orlando Hanna is the owner of Newspapers and Things. The roadside vendor says he began working part-time with his dad, who started the venture. But when his dad passed away in 2011, he took over the business full-time and has been operating it ever since. Orlando is best known for selling newspapers, plants, pop-up and other knickknacks, but what you may not know is that he uses his business to help others. Persons would bring stuff out, uh, Miss Anne, you think you could move this for me or you think you could? So I assist in that regard. Um, but mostly, you know, my top-up and the newspapers. Orlando says over the years he's received great support from locals, but recently business has been tough. The consistency is in there. Uh, Freeport News primarily is what I sell and they start printing so that customer base and that consistency is in there. Nonetheless he says he is remaining hopeful. I thank the public every day, every day. Some of them pass. Miss Ahana, thank you so much for what you do. You know your dad has been here. Thanks for carrying on the legacy. Me making a bunch of money, a pocket full of money but you know it's providing a service. And he says he'll continue to use his business to minister to others. A gentleman came by several weeks ago, wanted to commit, said he was ready to commit suicide. Um, long and short of it, I gave him something to read, we prayed together. Um, I haven't seen him since that, but I'm sure the Holy Spirit ministered to him during that time. And I haven't seen anything in the news with regards to anyone committing suicide. So I pray that he is well and how to change of thought. But ministry, you know, private persons who come out here. Um, and like I say, it's providing a service. So I thank the Grand Bahama community wholeheartedly of uh, supporting first my dad when he was out here. Um, and now it's, you know, been a blessing to me and my family. Some fishermen tell tales about the size of their catch, but the crew of all of Mangrove Key Andrews aboard the Sweet Dreams met out recently, and according to Captain Howard King, they found the right drop. The trick to that is you, you have to sow and sow you could reap. And what we did in the off season and what we do every off season is go out and make sure we put some dumps out. And so lucky for us this time around, our dumps, you know, we were able to, you know, harvest some product. It's a full complement of staff. When things are extra busy, they employ more. This boat uh, during the summer break uh, has employed 16 persons. But uh, when the lobster season kicks in, this boat here carries out about 27. And of course, there's the next craft on the outside. It's basically what we do, especially in the family of islands. We don't have uh, Atlantis, we don't have Obama. And so we have to make best with what we have, and that is the sea. And we've been doing that for years. And, you know, thank God for the sea. And speaking about those supplies, anything you want and it's fresh. We try to keep the price affordable. We look at the 
the market and we you know try to give the best incentive we could possibly give to our customers and so the prices goes up it goes down but we try to keep it like I said to a affordable rate the lane snapper is uh, high on demand barracuda is right there also you know fish fry a lot of people want to get their slice of barracuda while they're having a collect and then the mutton snapper you know these these are high-end market fish and as you can see we have quite a bit of selection of that right now bari by the kit and yes they are good these ones are caught on the bank and um you know low shallow areas not much wreck and so the risk of um you know being infected or having a virus is pretty low Great story there, Fisher. And be sure to stay tuned into the ZNS Network for news as it happens, TV and radio updates throughout the day. Then you can tune into the Northern Edition and the Bahamas tonight at 7. That's a wrap for us this morning. I feel like eating some stew fish. Yeah, and boiled fish. I'm ready for that. Have a great morning, everyone.